uh, 855-777-9660. And um, it, it, uh, the courts, and we were talking about that before, the courts, so important, not only this U.S. Supreme Court, which is the most important, obviously, but the other uh, branches, the other levels of, of, of uh, the federal courts and um, the district courts, and they're all so important. And uh, our friend John Lott, uh, who is president of the Crime Prevention Research Center, has, um, has uh, written, down, uh, written a book called Dumbing Down the Courts, uh, talking about how um, bigger government means dumber government, which leads to, in his view, uh, mediocre judges. So uh, we're uh, in, uh, in an effort right now to uh, hook up with uh, Mr. Lott, and uh, as soon as we do... Uh, you will be the first to know. Actually, I will be the first to know. You will be the second to know. I, I do promise you that. Uh, okay, here we go. See? I knew it. Now you know it. And now he knows it. Hello, John Lott. How are you, sir? Doing great, Steve. How are you doing? Good. Congratulations on the, uh, on the tome. Um, now, let, let me ask you this. And we know about the uh, the power that judges have, and uh, you know, and we know we've all uh, lamented over runaway judges and judges legislating from the bench. But y- your book talks about another aspect of all of that. About um, how it's called dumbing down the courts. Uh, how politics keeps the smartest judges off the bench. Explain. Well, it's it's all related to the point that you were just talking about. The reason why I wrote this book to begin with, or started to do the research, was. We've all seen how judicial confirmations have become a lot more contentious, a lot more vicious over time. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that judges have become a lot more powerful the last 50 or 60 years. Part of that is just the federal government's grown. We have a lot more agencies, everything from the EPA to the Equal Employment uh, Opportunity Commission, uh, as well as dozens of others, uh, which have brought a lot more cases to federal court. But also the point that you were just saying about runaway judges, the fact that judges feel less bound by black-letter law and more willing to kind of act as legislators has also increased their power. And so more is at stake now than there used to be, and that's one reason why we have the battles. Well, yeah, go ahead. ahead. What I've found is particularly interesting is how it's the smartest nominees who have the hardest time getting confirmed. Now, just phrase it to you this way. Have you ever been on a jury? I have not been on a jury. And my guess is you would never be on a jury, even if you get called for jury duty. And there's a simple reason why talk show hosts such as yourself are not on jury, and that is because you're very uh, articulate. You're very able to express your views. And so... Well, in my in my case, I would jump out of my chair and I would try to either litigate or defend the case, but uh, that's besides well, he, the point. Even if you were able to control yourself and not do that <laughs> for a while, they still wouldn't let you on the jury. And uh, so you're, you're really out of luck there. And it's just, and the reason is that you're more than one vote. You know, you, because you're so articulate, probably be able to swing two or three or four or five votes on the jury. And so they're very sensitive. Any little tiny leaning that you might have one way or the other they would use one of their peremptory strikes to strike you from the jury. Somebody else who may be a day laborer and not particularly articulate, who may have even greater biases, they're more than happy to let that person on relative to you because it's not as important. Right, and so, the same thing is true for judges. That's what I was going to say. And what you've done is you've applied this uh, to judges, but you've gone beyond uh, you know, telling us in your, your, your opinion, and, and you, you've, as you always do, so uh, eloquently and in terms that people can understand, you've taken the numbers, you've, you've, you've taken the statistics, and you've come up with, with, the, with the facts. You know, it's really dramatic. I mean, I just, first of all, just give people a rough idea of how confirmation battles have changed over the last century or so. From 1900 to 1976, uh, through the end of Gerald Ford's administration, uh, 80% of Supreme Court nominations were handled within one month. About 40% were actually taken care of within 10 days. But now, for the last four administrations, you're talking about 80 days. Some of these confirmation battles have gone up to about 114 days in terms of length. But um, to get an idea of how much more difficult it's been for the smartest nominee, if, if somebody for an appeals court judge position, for example, went to a top 10 law school and 
graduate in the top 10% of their class, it would take them about 70% longer to get through the confirmation process than somebody who didn't go to a top 10 law school and did not do particularly well even in the lower And why, law why, why, we only have about a minute and a half left. Why is that? Well, it's for the, because if they put a smart person, I and mean, if somebody who's able to influence others uh, on the courts, then they can change. Okay, so you're saying it's for the same. It's for the same reason that one or the other side would object to an uh, "quote unquote" intelligent, articulate juror. Same thing going on here with the judge, the judicial nominees. That's right, and because it's more important now who the judges is, we've seen this kind of be exaggerated this tendency. I mean, it's amazing. You go back a hundred years ago, you would see Republicans appoint Democrats to the Supreme Court, or Democrats appoint Republicans. And they would pick out people who were the smartest lawyers in the country to try to put on there. Now there's no chance that anybody would be able to get somebody considered one of the smartest lawyers in the country on the on any type of bench. Well, I think you're going to be hearing from uh, the Alitos and the Roberts and the Kagans and the Sotomayors <laughs> and maybe well, even Cle- – I know, I know. I'm only kidding. I'm only teasing you. No, uh, no, no. Yeah. I, in fact, I've had some judges kind of be upset by this who I know as friends. Yeah, but I think I think if you look at the data, it's very clear that the types of people who are getting on courts are just not as influential as they used to be, you know, maybe four presidents ago. Well, good good way to uh, good way to end it, John. I'm up against a hard break, but I appreciate it. The book uh, is "Dumbing Down the Courts: How Politics Keeps the Smartest Judges Off the Bench." Very interesting, John Lott, our friend. We'll talk to you, John. When we come back, Kendall Coffey and I go spitting the law on the Steve Malzberg Show, Newsmax TV and Radio. The Steve Malzberg Show.